Welcome to Sit Down News. Today, I'm going to speak to you about a story that I posted yesterday called Men of Dishonor. And that's in reference to Tommaso Buschett. If anyone has not seen the Netflix show called Our Godfather, it's very good and it's about, it's about his life and his family. Tommaso, by the age of 15, came to the attention of Gaetano Filippone, who was a boss, one of the bosses in a small town in Palamo, Sicily. And he received that recognition from his involvement in killing some German soldiers. And for those of you who are war boss, during World War II, Germany had a presence in Sicily from the start of the war. And it wasn't soon after that, I believe a year or two, if I'm not mistaken, that he was inducted into the family and he became what was known as a man of honor. I reference in the story a quote, and I'm not 100% sure if it's an accurate quote, but I've seen it before. And the quote is by Fat Andy Ruggiano, who came from my neighborhood. It was a well-respected guy uh, with the Gambino family. He was a captain in that family. And the quote says as follows, you were born a rat, you're not made a rat. What I wrote is on the contrary, Tommaso Buschetta, and I could attest to the same, has been in the hands of law enforcement on several occasions. And we never went against that street code, kept our mouth closed. And certainly a person of weak character or what they call in the street a rat would easily fold on the questioning or to get themselves out of trouble, they would start talking and giving people up. So with regard to law enforcement, and on cooperative behavior, that kind of refutes if that is, if that was, because he passed away, Fat Andy's quote, it kind of knocks, knocks the air out of that quote. That's why I wrote that. So he, Tommaso Buschetta, had been in a war in the 60s. There was a war in the 60s in Sicily. Many guys got killed back and forth. At least some policemen died. And, but now on the hinges of another war in the 80s, he decided he was going to take off and he fled to Brazil. While in Brazil, he received a telephone call from, I believe, one of his daughter in laws. And she was hysterical. And she let him know that both his sons, um, Antonio and Benedetto, were missing, nobody heard from them. And he knew right away. And it came to be known that not only were they were tortured, but their bodies were placed and dissolved in acid. And um, following, following losing his two sons, he lost, I believe, a total of seven family members and one being his brother and his nephew, they owned a glass shop and they went in there and they shot the bolt and killed them. One of his close friends, and he was, <clears throat> excuse me, he was a boss from Senisi in Sicily, was Gaetano Baldamente. And he went to go visit Tommaso in Brazil and to kind of urge him that he needs to retaliate. And he was also involved in the war with the Colonese. And, but he didn't want to retaliate. He says he could have easily killed his enemy's son as well. And he didn't, he didn't want to do that. And he felt that for the safety of his family, he would just remain in Brazil. And while he was in Brazil, he was also a fugitive there. He was wanted. And 
at some time, I believe in October of 83, he gets arrested in, in, uh, in Brazil and remains incarcerated. And in July of 1984, about a week before they were going to extradite him back to Sicily, he crushed a small vial of strychnine between his teeth. And he went into a uh, sick and he went into a coma and went and whatnot but he winds up surviving it and it was an attempt he tried to take his life and he explains it and i quote him it was not an act of weakness or mental or a mental breakdown or fear of being threatened by those who have savagely and unjustly attacked innocent members of my family what we just spoke about rather it was an act of love towards my wife and my children if I was added away, it would make it, it would make their lives much less complicated than if I was in prison. So he felt that if he just died, took his life, his family would suffer less than if he was in prison. I, I, I don't know about that. And I'm sure they felt, they would have felt otherwise, but he winds up living. And I also quote him here, he said, I was a mafioso and I have done many, many things wrong for which I am willing to pay in full my debt to society. And Tommaso Buschetta had start, began cooperating and he began cooperating with the famous um, prosecutor who at that time was a, an investigator, Gianni Falcone. And the newspapers labeled him El Primo Petito, which means the first turncoat. And um, because never before had a boss been cooperating. And it was during these conversations that Buschetta gave a 3,000 page confession over to the investigators. And I quote him again, he said, I spent most of my life as a member of the Sicilian mafia. I've seen many changes in the organization that I no longer feel bound by their code of silence or murky. In regard to corroborating, he, he states the following. He said, I got rid of a burden I've been carrying for many years. But as I wrote, even after he obviously was no longer a part of the life or in the life, Tommaso still considered himself a mafioso. And as I described, he has a unique way of explaining uh, what a mafioso is itself. He said a man riding a mule or a man wearing a thousand dollar jacket he bought at Fifth Avenue. And speaking of which, he traveled to New York, and that's probably how he knows about Fifth Avenue. Both of them are distinguished by the way they approach others. The mafioso seeks the relationship because from this relationship will grow future interests, so he is kind and polite. He seeks for relationships in high places if possible, and when he finds them, he is jealous. He does not show them, he hides them. He also wishes to be discreet about the things of others so he can teach others how to behave. And my take on that is, I one time told a story that we were gonna go meet uh, Joey Molino, the boss of Philadelphia. And I was gonna go to a dinner at Joe Perna's house in New Jersey. Joe Perna was a is a friend with the, with the Lucchese's. And Big John, my captain, got involved and found out that I was attending this, this introduction meeting. And he prevented me from going, but yet he went with himself. And not only himself, he brought his brother, Bubsy. And as Joe Perna told me, he was kissing Joey Molino's ass. And I just find it uh, compatible to the story where he said that they are jealous from relationships that they that they that they they find. 
Tommaso Boschetta was also interviewed by a journalist, Enzo Biaggi. And during the interview, he was asked, what is the mafia? And I give his explanation of what he felt the mafia is. He said the mafia is, was a thing when it, when it was created, over time, this thing has deteriorated. I remain a member of the Cosa Nostra in the same spirit as when I joined. Mm -hmm. But the ideals of Cosa Nostra change, which do not correspond to the original ideals. Self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Basically, he's saying that what was once was, was no longer. So when he entered the life, and as the life went on, he seen the um, what he says is the uh, the ideals of the life kind of went out the window, and they didn't correspond with the original ideals, which meant that things have changed, and that not only happened in Sicily, it happened in America as well. And Enzo Biaggi asked him, is there such a good, such a thing as a good, gentle, and sentimental mafioso, which he replied, I am one. He had testified at the famous Pizza Connection case. And during that time on the witness stand, he explained to the jury, and I quote him again, he said, Cosa Nostra is a Sicilian expression meaning our thing, it belongs to us. When a prosecutor asked how he entered the organization, <laughs> the entire courtroom burst out at the laugh, laughed at his response, including Baldamente. Baldamente, his friend, was on trial on the Pizza Connection case, and he also was laughing at his response. And that response was, I didn't make out any application to become a member. I was called, I was invited. And basically what he's saying, and I've always said it, is that you do not pick that life, that life picks you. Further explaining, after taking his oath, certain rules were made clear to him. And I, I was reminded to behave, he said, in an appropriate manner, to be silent, not to look at other men's wives and women. And I highlighted that because of my own situation. And the prosecutor asked him, what would happen, so far as you know, as if you, as, as you were told, if you violated one of those principles that you described? And his answer was death, meaning that in that life, if you violate one of those rules, your consequence is death. During an essential part of the interview, Biagi asked him, who is Bruschetta today? And he wanted to know, you know, what did he feel about himself? Obviously, now he was no longer in life. He was cooperating. He had testified at a bunch of trials. He had the big maxi trial. I think they had over 400 cold defendants. And I mean, 400 defendants. And they were, uh, it was built all cells around the courtroom they were in their cells watching this and i say with pure sincerity he answered i may have changed category which means i guess he was once in a life and now he's not in a life once i was a mafioso now as my enemies say i'm a snitch i'm a rat but inside tomaso buschetta remains the same so he's basically saying no matter what they call him he's still the same person. He said he believes in dignity, human dignity, very difficult to find, but when it, is, when it is encountered, it is a precious thing. And I said that um, his humble and honest ex explanation in regard to cooperate, and I, I agree with wholeheartedly. And here is what he had to say about that. He said, I, ne I had... I have never written an anonymous letter to a judge. When I made up my mind, I did it so that everyone could see what I was doing. In doing so, others could follow my example. And why I believe wholeheartedly in that statement is that 
what Tomaso Boschetta did, what I myself did, I cooperated. We didn't do it behind the scenes. We did it out in the open with our names out there, pictures in the newspaper and whatnot. And I know what he's saying, and he's correct. There are people out there, even right now, and probably in his time, I'm sure, that are working behind the scenes and they are confidential informants. They are cooperating behind the curtains of, of uh, you know, the public and that life, and they're giving information. There's no doubt about it. And he's basically saying what I did, I did out in the open. So I wrote, in summary, Monotime Cosa Nostra represents a parity of allegiance within its members. And that's my opinion. My opinion, you know, there's, there's a fraudulent allegiance that's portrayed in that life. And, and I had to learn that the hard way. So for anyone listening that thinks that that life is about allegiance, you are mistaken. More specifically, I said, rules that are explained to new members that are being inducted are steadfastly broken. That's a given. You know, there are rules that are being told to you during that ceremony when you're being inducted, if you're being inducted. And as I've said time and time again, those rules are being broken daily by multiple people in that life. I said, however, civilians and non-members and associates, or those who yet who yearn to be associated with Cosa Nostra, have a reckless disregard for, of the truth. The reason being is they don't know any better. You know, you're only on the outskirts or the very far outskirts of that life. You have no clue and no idea what the inner workings of that life is about. And how how could you? I said the relevant explanation is that, A, I mean, people believe the misconception that these people that they idolize are true men of honor. They're not. But, you know, like I said, I have the right to my opinion and everybody has the right to theirs. Maybe you could go find out for yourself how true they are to being men of honor. And then I close with, a board game. I said, there's rules. And if a player disregards those rules for the sole benefit, for a sole benefit, we would call that cheating, right? You know, we're playing a board, board game. Hey, what are you doing? No, you're cheating. You can't do that, right? And it, and it bears some resemblance to Cosa Nostra because it is an organization built upon rules. And these rules are continuously broken. I've seen it myself. I can I could do a, a 10 hour podcast on just how many rules are broken and how many I've seen broken. As I said, members of this organization will always undermine easily manipulated minds. You know, there's a lot of young people and not so young people that are just either mob fans or mob groupies or what they this new word fanboys or whatever whatever way you want to phrase it and they're very easily manipulated and i was guilty of it myself one day is that you're actually just being a follower and you're following what other people are saying you know if you have a brain and you have you know you have a mind of your own shouldn't be following what other people are saying because you will find out <laughs> that what's being said and what's being done are two different things. But on that note, Tommaso Buschetta passed away at the age of 71 of cancer. And I watched, I watched the Netflix um, show, Our Godfather, and I've read a lot about Tommaso Buschetta. And, you know, I think that it really, really bothered him. And I get it. You know, you don't want no one talking about you. And you don't want people smearing your name and, 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 and calling you, 
you know, all these, all these names, but you know, that's, that's just the way life goes. That's what happens. And, you know, he, he, his daughter spoke on a show and, and spoke about her father that he was heartbroken. You know, she knew he was heartbroken and, you know, he believed in something and it's just like, kind of like a marriage, right? Like if you believe in your wife and you find out that she's this different person that's cheating on you, it's disheartening. And that's the same with situations like this. Tommaso, myself, and many other people have broken a rule or Myrtha. We're not supposed to talk, right? We all have our own reasons why we did what we did. I have mine and I stick by mine. However, I always say that but when society or those same people who idolize the mob or those fanboys or whatever name we're going to use, when they could come up with a name for the guys as a whole, because I'm not sure as a whole, because they're all rule breakers and they, they do not follow the rules, they break them all the time. When they come up with the name for them, whether it be rat, snitch, wh wh whatever one they want to use, turn code, you know, I'll accept that name once we once we once we're giving it as a whole, I can accept that name. But until that time, I'm not going to accept these uh, childless names that uh, that people come up with. As everybody knows, I do not entertain negativity and with that being said i hope you enjoyed it i tried to give you a little more this is not something personal to me because obviously i didn't know tomaso Buschetta, but i just wanted to cover that and hope you enjoyed it if you did not subscribe to sit down news subscribe down below and we thank everyone for all the subscribers that have subscribed and for all the um, positive messages that we've been getting, and we, we really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy your day and enjoy the rest of your night. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm done.